The nose consists of an external nose, which is this area here. The opening, your nostrils, are called external nares. So the air moves in through the external nares and will go into this area of the external nose called the vestibule. This is the entrance before you get into the nasal cavity. The function of the nose will be, as mentioned before, to moisten, warm, and clean the incoming air. But in addition, the nose is involved in your sense of smell or olfaction. The nasal cavity includes all of this area here. And it is divided into two compartments by a nasal septum. This is the wall. The term septum means wall that separates your nasal cavity in two. Anteriorly, it will consist of hyaline cartilage. Posteriorly, you will have the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone at the top, so that's the superior portion, and the vomer at the bottom or the inferior portion. The roof of the nasal cavity is made up of these bones. Here is the sphenoid bone. You can see the sphenoid sinus there. This is the cribiform plate of the ethmoid bone. This is the frontal bone, and that's the frontal sinus. And then, I don't know if you remember from AP1, but you have some very tiny bones here called nasal bones. They're paired. The lateral wall of each compartment or side will consist of the nasal conchi. These are the ridges covered by mucosa. The inferior nasal concha, and concha is just singular, conchi is plural. The inferior nasal concha, these are paired bones, so you have actually two of them. This is a separate bone, and then the middle and superior nasal conchi, which are part of the ethmoid bone. The floor of the nasal cavity is actually the hard and the soft palate. The hard palate, remember, consists of the palatine processes of the maxillary bones. You can see the suture right there. And posteriorly, the palatine bones, which are paired. The soft palate consists of muscle, so this represents muscle covered by mucosa. This section right in here, this structure is the uvula, and we'll talk about that later. Posteriorly, the opening here going into, this is the nasal pharynx, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But the opening into the nasal pharynx is called the internal nares. So you had the external nares, the, this is the internal nares. The hairs that are located in the external nose are called vibrissae, and they help trap larger substances such as insects trying to fly into your or your external nares. The mucosa in the nasal cavity is of two types. The olfactory mucosa will have receptors for smell. These are your olfactory receptors. The olfactory nerves are going to go through the olfactory foramina. Remember, these are the holes in the cribiform plate of the ethmoid bone to the olfactory bulbs. The rest of the mucosa is called respiratory mucosa, and it will consist of the ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells. A long term here, but you will have to include all of this when you identify this epithelium. Why is it called pseudostratified columnar epithelium? Recall that pseudo means fake. It is not actually stratified. It is consists of just one layer. So let's look at this illustration that I've drawn. This green line represents the basement membrane. 
Notice that every cell rests on the basement membrane. This makes this a simple epithelium, but it has the appearance of being stratified. The reason why it looks stratified is because the cells are of different heights. So notice each one rests on the basement membrane, but some of the cells are shorter than others, and that does make it look like it is stratified. This represents the cilia, and this represents a goblet cell, which produces the mucus. Remember that the function of the mucus is to moisten the air as well as to trap any particles that you breathe in. And the function of the cilia is to move that mucus up towards your throat so that you can swallow it. The movement of the cilia is called a mucociliary escalator. Smoking will actually damage the cilia and a smoker will de uh, develop a smoker's cough. That's because the smoker, since the cilia is absent, is not able to move the mucus up toward the throat to swallow it. Instead, the mucus will move down toward the lungs by gravity. And the only way to get that mucus out and prevent it from going into the alveoli is to cough. Let's look at the conchi. What is their function? Those are those ridges here. And if you recall from the skull, you learned about the conchi in the bone. The purpose of the conchi is twofold, to increase the surface area so that you have more mucosa coming in contact with the air to moisten and warm it, as well as to clean it. In addition, it slows the movement of the air through the nasal cavity. It creates air turbulence. So since you've got some ridges here, instead of being flat where the air could just come straight in, now there's going to be some turbulence, slowing the air down, giving it more time to come in contact with the mucus. The meatuses are the depressed areas underneath each concha. So here's the superior concha, here is the superior meatus middle concha, middle meatus, and inferior concha, inferior meatus. Emptying into the inferior meatus is the nasal lacrimal duct, which carries tears from your eye. When you are crying, your nose will drip, and that is because of the tears moving into your nasal cavity. The palate, as we mentioned before, is going to consist of a hard palate, which is bone, and then the soft palate, which will be the posterior end, is going to be muscle covered in mucosa.